This is View from the Top. I am Modelia Sharafa Isuf, and I'm glad that you could join us today. Nigerians identify themselves first with their tribes and kingdoms, then as citizens of the country. This works in most African cultures because tribes and kingdoms provide a nucleus around which an identity can be forged. The traditional rulers are the rallying points for, and indeed the symbols for their communities. Before the advent of colonialism, traditional rulers were the political, social, cultural, and economic administrators of their various localities. Although they have no formal role in the democratic structure, they continue to command respect from their people and have considerable influence. They play useful roles in preserving the culture and traditions, enhancing national identity, resolving conflicts, mediating between the people and the state, and providing an institutional safety valve for often inadequate state bureaucracies. Dr. Benjamin Ikechuku Kiagore Kuzi, the day in Yovago, is one of Nigeria's first class traditional rulers, and I am truly honored to have him on view from the top today. Your Royal Majesty, we thank you sincerely. Thank you very much. And we thank you again for tuning in. Let's quickly get you acquainted with His Royal Majesty before we launch into our conversation. The day in Yovago was born on June 29, 1977. But following the unexpected death of his father in 1979, he was crowned king at the age of two years and four months, the youngest at that time anywhere in the world. This feat was noted in the Guinness Book of World Records in 1981 when he was acknowledged as the youngest crowned monarch. He attended the Catholic School of Kent and later the College Bearwood in Surrey, College of St. Benedict, Ealing, and the Burbeck College in London. He returned to Nigeria 15 years ago to reclaim his throne. Dr. Benjamin Ikechuku was appointed Chancellor of the University of Illorin in March 2006, and he was once Vice Chairman, Delta State Traditional Rulers Council. He is also an officer in the Order of Belgium. Most towns, Agbo faces the challenges of preservation and enhancement of its culture and tradition, community development, self-help, etc. What is the traditional institution doing to make a difference in the lives of the people? As a monarch, um, I'm here to intercede in the lives of my people. The Almighty God has given me a job. That job is to be, if you want to say, a servant to my people. I think many people in power seem to sometimes forget that God has actually sent us here to be a servant to our people. I'm here to voice the pains of my people, to voice their joy, and to, as you mentioned earlier, be some type of uh, go-between between my people and the state and the federal government, as well as the local government. So what I try to provide is an example. What would you say is the role of royalty in a democracy? Can you can encapsulate that for us? It's the same as it has always been. Be there to protect your people. Be there to speak for your people's needs for your people's rights, and be there to set a good example for them as much as possible. Um, for me, many people would say that uh, I'm trying to run a, a democracy within the kingdom rather than a, monarch a monarchy itself. I believe in listening to people. I believe in hearing people's points of view. Um, as you well know, I came to the throne at the age of two years old. And so for me, it became very real that what was said in the Bible, what is hidden from the wise and the prudent shall be revealed to the babes and the sucklings, came true. Now, that being the case, I try to give everybody a fair hearing. So if I'm amongst a meeting with my chiefs, if I'm amongst a meeting with my people, as far as I'm concerned, if a seven-year-old wants to stand up and talk, we should listen because you never know where a good idea will come from. You never know where your people will have the incentive, the incentive to move forward. Would you say that the role of royal fathers is clearly understood by all? In this modern day that we're living in now, I would say not. Unfortunately, Nollywood, which has become very, very well known across the world, sometimes tends to portray a slightly ill impression of the traditional rulers and, and I sometimes wish that uh, within our television, within our, our, our nation as a people, those things that we put into the uh, theatres were a bit more positive. 
there seems to be quite a lot of negative uh, roles that seem to be played by some of these uh, actors when they are acting traditional rulers. So certainly there are the younger generation that have really never been um, privy to what a monarch is. They've never really become close to most of the monarchs. Um, a palace, a monarchy is not always something that uh, one is brave enough to just come there and see the monarch. I've, in the 15 years I've been here, tried to explain to my people, I'm not such a monarch. I would much prefer to be in and amongst my people. I would like to be able to sit down with the poor of my people. I would like to be able to go to the school, sit down with the children. I would like to be accessible to my people. But of course, at the same time, I must respect tradition, customs and culture. So it is a, a fine line to try and tread. But um, certainly we want to try and, with such programs as this, enlighten people that uh, the monarchy is not as scary as some people might like to wish to see it. It was a question I was going to ask you, that you know, sometimes get a sense. Traditional rulers are so far removed from the people, and we only see them on occasions like festivals and social ceremonies. That's correct. Is this uh, elitism necessary to preserve the mystique of the institution? Uh, whether you like it or not, there's a mystique of the institution of the presidency. There's a mystique of the institution of the House of Reps. There's a mystique of the institution of the senators. There's mystique in almost every institution. These things have to be here um, necessarily to allow for those that are in these positions to be respected and to be understood at a separate level of authority. So sometimes that is necessary for it to be there. It shouldn't be there to the point where the people don't understand. It shouldn't be there to the point where the people fear. That, I would say, would not be the best situation. In most towns and cities, the traditional ruler, in most states, the traditional ruler is, at the, is there at the pleasure of the government in power. Should this be the case? Uh, shouldn't they be answerable only to the people of their domains? Of course that should be the case. We have to remember if there were no traditional rulers, there would be no Nigeria. We as the traditional rulers, we went into agreement with the government of the day. First, of course, with the colonial powers. Those contracts, those uh, agreements are still there. Without monarchs, the modern day government would not be there. The monarchs in this situation have gone into agreement with the federation with the government to be able to pass our powers to the government in order for them to assist us all to provide. The main thing is to provide for the people. The most important thing in any nation is the people themselves. The government are there to serve the people, just like the monarchs are also there to serve the people. You lived in England for most of your formative years. The monarchy in England has endured over several decades in that society. How do we maintain the relevance of the traditional institution and make sure it survives in a changing 21st century without losing its distinguished identity? Um, that's quite easy to do. We respect our monarchs. We respect our traditional rulers. The government has a long and very historical role to play here. In days of old, it seems that the monarchs in this country were a lot closer to the government than they certainly seem to be now. And I would advocate for that to come back. It would be very, very difficult to do away, as some of the European countries have, with our monarchy. For instance, the Arab monarchy dates back to at least 721 BC. I don't think that that would be wise for Africa to throw such away. So just as the monarchy is respected in the UK, and we know what Great Britain has been able to benefit from having such an enduring monarchy. As even as far as I, I don't think many people understand that uh, the Pope of Rome himself carries the title of King of the Vatican. So you see, these institutions endure for a reason, and there should never be a reason to mock those institutions. The monarch is like a father to his people. You wouldn't mock your biological father. You wouldn't decide because you're not happy with your biological father, he's no longer going to be the head of the household. God has placed him there as the head of the household. If there are problems, then you quietly sort these problems out. I do not believe that monarchs should embarrass the government, and I do not believe that the government should embarrass monarchs. They should work hand in hand 
to do the most vital role they have been placed there for, which is to give sukkah and development to their people. We must take a break now. We ask that you please join us again after this short break.